All right, everybody, Chris Grandy, planwithchris.com. You can also go to chrisgrandy.com. I haven't done much of my personal blog um, lately, but today's question I want to cover from Quora is an amalgamation of all the questions about a very famous investor that you all know. And you've probably asked some of these questions yourself at some point in your life if you have any interest in investing. And that person's name is Warren Buffett. And the kind of questions that come up are, let me give you some examples. Why did Warren Buffett buy Apple stock when he is known for not investing in tech companies? What stock would Warren Buffett or Benjamin Graham buy today if he were you? Why does Warren Buffett buy convertible preferred stocks instead of convertible bonds? Why did Warren Buffett buy airline stocks? How does Warren Buffett buy discounted stocks? What does Warren Buffett think of Ethereum? What stocks is Warren Buffett buying? Did Warren Buffett buy any private stocks? How does Warren Buffett invest? How did Warren Buffett became so rich? And then the question I answered today was basically, who, what, who tracks what stocks, well, who tracks what stocks Warren Buffett buys? That's not what I answered today. It's another question. The one I answered today was basically is if, if you were invested in something and you saw that Buffett was going the other way or said buy or sell it, would you change your mind? So there's so many Buffett questions. In order to properly answer Buffett questions, though, you have to decide, figure out, number one, where you're coming from, and number two, know where, where Buffett is. So first off, let me ask where you're coming from. Are you asking this question because you want to make the big money he's, he made from a young age on? Or are you just looking to make some smarter, you know, small-scale financial decisions and stocks, you have some extra money, don't want to do something stupid? Which end of the spectrum would you put yourself on? Over here? trying to rapidly grow capital or over here just trying to, you know, be kind of smarter. The reason why I ask that is because you have to realize you need to ask, if you're trying to do one or the other, you need to ask young Buffett or old Buffett. Let's compare young Buffett to old Buffett, okay? Young Buffett ran a partnership, aka a hedge fund. Young Buffett made over 25% a year, I think, even through some of the bad years with his partnership year in and year out, some years 40, 45%. I mean, he was just consistently cranking it. And as a part, as a hedge fund, he got a 25% profit share. So in other words, if he made 40% that year, 10 of it, one fourth of it came right to him. You know, so if he was managing $100 million and he made 40%, made $40 million, 10 million of those profits went right to him as the, as the uh, hedge fund manager and plus whatever shares he owned himself grew that much. And because he was taking advantage, what's interesting about Young Buffett and Old Buffett is he makes fun of all the tax rules now that he took advantage of himself to become so rich. That that whole, um, you know, when he made a $10 million profit and rolled it into the hedge fund, he didn't pay any taxes on that because it was a deferred gain. It's kind of the stuff that people have complained about the last few years about hedge funds being able to defer their gains. He did that all over the place. That's how he built, I mean, if he had to pay taxes in those years, on that wealth, he would have got croaked at some of the tax rates. You know, some of those tax rates when, uh, when you know, until Kennedy came in office and started lowering them. I mean, he would have got croaked. Croaked. So, realize that too. But just another, but, but tax questions, discussions aside, realize that young Buffett was an, was an aggressive investor. He would have $100 million in three or four stocks. Would you do that? If you couldn't see yourself putting all your money in like two, three, four stocks, you can't do what Young Buffett did. But realize that's what Young Buffett did. He did all kinds of research. He got highly convicted about ideas and he executed on those ideas and he bought a large position in something he believed in. He was more like a world-class athlete of investing than, than you might realize. I mean, he was a, you know, a top performer. He would research, think about a guy who would like research all year, spend a whole year, because it was his full-time job, right? It wasn't just on the weekend. He would research investments, and he might buy three or four things the whole year. Imagine all that time research to make three or four decisions. It reminds me of stories that my friend Paul Kingsman talks about. He was an Olympic medalist. He won the bronze medal in the 84 Olympics. And he talks about how he would train four years for that one moment. So you're talking about a lot of research, kind of like football teams, and they practice all week for one 60-minute game, right? Paul would train four years for one Olympic event, or maybe a couple. 
Buffett would read, research, work all years, you know, calling, researching, doing his due diligence all year to make two or three big decisions. That was young Buffett. And when he found something he liked, he put a ton of money into it. And then he got, you know, obviously got the tax advantages, etc. And he also did it on the side, on the side, when he had cash, he couldn't find an investment to put into. He did something called merger arbitrage, which is an, was a great opportunity back then where he would take advantage of the price differences between a company that was buying out another company. Their prices would fluctuate. He would look and check the value between the two of them and make money on the difference. And you really can't do that these days. That's uh, that, that arbitrage opportunity has been kind of wiped out by market information. But back then it was big deal. And literally on that side cat um, pile of money, he would make 25% a year plus. Amazing stuff. So that's young Buffett aggressive grower of capital. On the other side, you have older Buffett, who um, has admitted he can't find what to do with all the cash he has. He can't find an investment that is big enough, where it can make a big enough difference to try to grow his huge pile of money. So oftentimes he's buying stuff that's not that exciting. It's a much different investor. He can't buy as big a position, so he owns many more positions than he used to. And on top of that, um, you know, because of that, he just, and that's why you'll see him just espouse market um, index investing. So older, older Buffett um, is, is in a situation where he, he sees that there's a lot more information in the market, a lot more people involved, index investing, etc. It's harder to find some of the opportunities that he found. Although he did admit that if he only managed $1 million, I think he said this not too long ago, considering he's, he's 80 something years old, but not too long ago in his life, he has said, life, he has said something to the effect that if he only managed a million dollars, only a million, he'd make 50% a year because he'd be much more nimble. And I believe him, he probably could. I mean, he's just an amazing, like I said, high-performing athlete of investing. But older Buffett is, is constrained by that stuff that I talked about earlier. You know, he just has too much money. What can he buy where he can double his money and make a big difference on the fund? If you manage $150 billion, okay, just in order to make 20%, you need to make $30 billion. What investment can he buy can he buy something for $30 billion and double it? I mean, do companies that big double? I mean, occasionally, like, you know, Facebook would double in a year. But, I mean, he's just, he'd have to buy the whole company. You know, in its infancy, he'd have to buy the whole company at the IPO. And then just think about if Buffett bought at Facebook's IPO, whatever it was, valued at $30 or $40 billion, bought the whole thing. Of course, it quadrupled. And that would have doubled the price of, of Buffett's uh, company in a couple of years. That still wouldn't be as good as the performance he did when he was when he was smaller and making 25 to 50 percent a year on investments. So, you know, older Buffett's a little bit more constrained. So realize that you need to figure out who, what your goal is and whether you should be talking to older or younger Buffett. Now, if you want to talk to younger Buffett, there are these partnership letters which you could read, and I will link below, and really learn about how he's thinking. Older Buffett, there's there's some good books written about him. That interviewed him when he was in when he was in his 50s and 60s, or you can just watch all the CNBC articles that are on the web right now and just get a feel for him now. But that's you know you have to realize that and figure out where you're coming from. Older Buffett or younger Buffett better for you. Second thing is realize that older Buffett also has some other mitigating situations that pop up. Um, number one, he has handed off the management of, of a good chunk of his money to other people. So some of his recent investments, you might say, why did Buffett buy? IBM or Kraft Heinz. I mean, IBM, notoriously just poorly managed company, in my opinion. Sorry, it just, I mean, really, 20 straight quarters of declining revenue. I think that qualifies. I don't think I'm being, and and, and they used to do some funky stuff. And I, I'm really a fan of, of Fred Hickey's research on some of their maneuvers over the past decade, you know, like buying a company and just, it, just some of the stuff that they did. But anyway, not to get too much on IBM, but just, you know, I don't think that's a company Buffett would have bought. I don't think he would have bought that stock, but I think one of his deputies did. But when you see him on TV, he says, yes, we bought that. We bought that. See, I think Buffett is too much of a team player to say, to blame one of his managers or put all the blame on them because he's always believed in good management and good people. And I think he, he believes that. So, for example, like the woman who managed the, the uh, Omaha furniture store, he would always was a fan of finding good management. So I think he wants to be that himself, and he's not the type of person to throw one of his teammates under the bus. But I don't think he was the one who made the decision to buy IBM. So realize that there's that going on too. And the fact that, you know, it's true, if you look at a lot of mutual funds out there, a lot of them don't beat the S&P. But as an aside, I just want you to be very careful about that particular 
uh, argument too, not from his standpoint, but just in general when analyzing investments, that if you're trying to beat the S&P, you know, you can't have your bond mutual fund and compare it to the S&P. And you can't have a balanced fund, which is 30 or 40% in bonds compared to the S&P. It's, it's not a fair comparison. So realize that, yeah, a lot of mutual funds don't beat the S&P, but that's by design. The one, But it is the case that many mutual funds that do try to beat the S&P don't. And so therefore, like, you know, what are they doing wrong? Well, Buffett's right. They're just not, a lot of them might have career risk. They're afraid of trying to do something different to make money for their investors because different means they might have a bad year and get fired. So what they do is they would call closet in in indexing, which is they'll buy some of the, a lot of the same stocks that are in the index. Their performance will be close enough to the index so that their, their boss doesn't fire them and they just keep a nice plush job, you know, in downtown Boston or wherever they are. So that's, you know, understood there that, you know, a lot of people don't want to take the career risk that's involved with, uh, with managing, trying to manage a mutual fund differently for growth. So he has a good point there when he says index investing is better for a lot of people because it's true, it is. So, I mean, you have to come into the realization from all this discussion, though, that, you know, just kind of summarizing everything, that what are you trying to do? Trying to grow capital or you're trying to just make some few smarter decisions? Should I be talking to young Buffett or listening to young Buffett or listening to older Buffett? You know, and therefore, if I am listening to older Buffett, what are some of the things going on right now that might affect, you know, the decisions coming out of Berkshire and what he says, et cetera, these new managers that are managing money, some of the decisions that have been made, and take that all into account. And when comparing your own investments, you know, compare them fairly. You may be uh, investing in something that is not meant to beat the S&P, but someone is telling you it should. So just... Or you may be investing in something that's trying to beat the S&P and never does. And so, you know, you have to decide there too. So just keep that all in mind. There's a lot here to think about. But when it comes to the general Buffett questions, know which angle you're coming from. Know which Buffett you should be listening to. And do that research and come out with a, with a uh, satisfactory answer for you. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, like, you know, please click like. If you want to subscribe, get some more videos on my, my, my new series on Quora Answers. Uh, which I've, I've been building up, you know, feel free to see, watch some of those other videos. And also just, you know, if you um, want any questions or anything, just drop them down below or contact me at the website. In the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon.